for the following exercises. Which of the tables could represent a linear function? For each that could be linear, find a linear equation that models the data. All right, so first thing is you have to know that a linear equation, take a look down here, a linear equation has a constant slope. That means the slope between any two points is always going to be the same. Here, take a look. Pretend I had a graph, right? And I asked you, what is the slope or the steepness of this incline? You can think about it that way between these two points. Well, you tell me it's some value, right? Uh, call it 2. I don't know. And then I were to ask you, well, what's then the value of the slope between these two points? And you say, well, wait, it looks the same to me. It's 2 again. That's the whole point, right? Linear functions have the constant slope the whole way, as opposed to, let's say, something that looks like a quadratic, right? What's the slope between these two points? Well, that's just a straight line that connects them. So it looks something like, well, something like that. And then what's the slope maybe between these two points? Well, it would look, it would look something like that. Forgive my approximation, but you can definitely tell that the, the blue line is definitely not the same as the uh, black line. All right. So what I have to do is I have to figure out whether uh, there is a constant slope in this data. So the easiest way to do this is to just simply take the change between each X value and then do the same thing between each Y value. And then we're going to find the slopes. OK, so the change here from to go from five to ten, we had to increase by five. Right. In other words, ten minus five is five. OK. The second one is going to be to go from 10 to 20. Obviously, we went up by 10. Or you could have said, well, 20 minus 10 is 10. Okay, that's easy. And then second one is 20 to 25. So we had to increase by 5, or aka the final value minus the initial was 5. Similarly, we're going to do the same thing now for the uh, y value. I know it says h or k, but just remember we can just call that simply y. All right, that's, that's good enough. And those are supposed to be uh, uh, quotes up there, but I don't really know what they are. Okay. And now it looks like we don't have anything. So let's just, all right, let's just leave it alone, huh? All right, so here, the change here is going to be what? Well, it looks like if I found 13, I had to add what to it to get to 28? Well, it looks like I have to add 15 to it, right? Or in other words, 28 minus 13, final minus initial was 15. So uh, 28 minus 13, hopefully I said that is 15. Okay, so now to go to 28 to 58, I have to, I had to add 30, right? Or in other words, 50 minus the 28 was 30. And last but not least, to make the uh, last jump here, right, 58 to 73, it sounds like I would have to add 15 to that again, or doing the subtraction, you realize we get the same thing. Now, once I, so now that I have this, what I now need to do is I now need to basically find the slope value. And the slope value is simply the change in y over the change in x. Or in other words, it's the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's actually what we were doing here. We were finding a whole bunch of x changes, and then we were finding a whole bunch of y changes. Okay. So now what I have to do is, and I color coded it, so now what I have to do is take the y value, the y change, and divide it by the x. So we said that the one in black was 15 divided by 5. And obviously that works out to be 3, right? The one in red is then going to be the same thing. Change in y over that change in x. We're going to get now 30 over 10. Huh. That's also 3. Okay. And last but not least, the last one is going to be 15 over 5. Oh my goodness. It's the same. Once you notice that these are all the same value, you know you're dealing with a linear function, my friends. Okay. Now, it is a linear function, yes, and this represents the slope. The slope is constant. It doesn't change, okay? So now, let's write that over here. Slope is equal to 3. I'm just going to put that in a little box. And to save a little space, I'm going to just erase this beautiful work, right? Oh, my goodness. All right. So now, and I'll erase some of this stuff, too. All right. So now... We have the slope, and we have to find, now it says, a linear equation that models this data. So what do, I mean, what do they mean by that? Well, they mean that if I know that this is linear, I know it's going to be some general form that looks like this, y equals mx plus b. Okay? In order to create a linear equation that describes a linear line, you have to know the value of the slope and the y-intercept. In other words, a linear line is defined by its slope and by its y-intercept, okay? 
Those are two properties, right? Imagine if I had this particular linear line, okay? Had that slope and across the y-axis at that location. Wouldn't that line be different than, let's say, a line that I moved up like this? Aren't those two different lines? They intersect the y-axis at two different places. So they're different lines. What happens also if I manipulated the slope of this? Doesn't that make it a different line as well? Sure, right? So those two things define a linear line, right? The slope and the y-intercept. So basically, in order to write an equation for a linear line, we have to know both. We got to know the y-intercept and we got to know the slope. We got one of them out of the way, right? The slope, but now we got to find the y-intercept. So how do we do that? Anytime you have an equation, okay, and you know three of the things, you can always find the third. So you might say, well, that's great, Andrew. I know that, but, uh, you know, I only know the slope. What's the x and the y? Well, now you have to know what this basically means. x, or, well, that's a y. y and x represent any point on the line. Any point. So, wait a minute. What did these represent? Those represented points. How many points did you have? You had four of them. Right? So now, basically, I can take any of them, plug them in, and I'll be able to find B. Okay? So it doesn't matter to me what you do. Why don't we choose the first? Okay? Remember, K of X is really like Y. So this is 13. Will be equal to the slope value of 3 multiplied by the X value that was 5 there plus the unknown B. Let's solve. So this is 13. Excuse me. This is 13 is equal to, I was jumping ahead as you can see, 15 plus B minus the 15 on over. And we realize now B will equal negative 2. And now I have defined the line. I can just put it together now in the equation. Y will equal the slope 3x, excuse me, not plus, but minus the y-intercept. There's the equation. Voila. All right, let's take a look at the next one. If you'd like to challenge yourself, pause the video and give it a shot. Check the answer then, all right? So let's see. We have a change of 2 here. We have a change of 2 here. And we have a change of 2 here. Okay, I'm already thinking since these are the same, then these better also be the same now when I look at them. If they're not, something is going to be a little fishy. Okay, so what's the difference between these two? Well, it looks like if you need to pull out the calculator, that's not a problem, right? But it looks like it's going to be negative 25. Okay, what's the change between these two? Well, I'll put it in red. That also looks like it's going to be a negative 25, right? And now how about last but not least, what's the change between this? Well, that also looks like it's going to be negative 25. So since these are all constants, since this, right, now thinking about, right, if I divide this by this, that's going to be some number. If I divide this by this, that's going to be the same number. And then if I divide this by this, that's going to be the same number as well. So I know already that this is linear, okay, since they all match up. However, though, since they want me to find the equation, I know I need to find the slope. So just take one of them. You're going to remember slope is always change in y over change in x. It's going to be negative 25 all divided by 2. And you can leave it this way. Actually, I will leave it this way. All right. And so you can write it as a decimal. I'm just going to write it a little neater. So this is negative 25 over 2. And I know you said I thought you were going to write it neater. And I thought it was 2. But um, yeah. So here we go. So here's, here's now the value. Right. That's the value of the slope. Okay. Since I know the slope now, I need to find the y-intercept. So let me just get rid of some of this just so it doesn't look too jumbled. And remember, we're going to use do that by using our formula. y is equal to mx plus b. I can choose any single point I want here. Why don't we choose this? I like it because it has a zero and no negative in it, right? Because who likes to work with negatives if we can avoid it? So the y value, which is essentially g of x, is 6. The slope we found was negative 25 over 2. And then the x value was 0. Oh, thank goodness, it cancels that crazy fraction, right? And notice, that just goes bye-bye, and the y-intercept is equal to 6, right? Could not be easier. So now all we need to do is plug it on into the formula. So y is equal to the slope value of negative 25 over 2, x plus 6. Voila. Last but not least, all right? Let's identify the changes. So this is going to be 2. This is going to be 2. Hmm. This is going to be 2. So we better anticipate having the same changes on the bottom, right? So let's see. 
3 to 23. What? 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 That's 13. 13 to 23. That's going to be 10. 23 to 43. Hmm, that's 20. And then 43 to 53. That's 10. They tried to trick me here. They tried to get us, right? But they didn't. So notice now, what's the problem? You know that when you divide the 10 by the 2, that's going to be 5. But wait a minute, this is going to be 10, and that's 5. Since they do not, since it, the slope is not consistent, you get a big ol' no. All right? It's not linear. And that's it, guys. All right? So I appreciate your viewership very much. Thank you for tuning in. And I do hope this video helped. If it did help, if you wouldn't mind helping us out by just hitting that subscribe button. It's so simple, and it's totally free to subscribe. All right? And it really does actually make a huge difference to us. So um, it'd be awesome if you could. And even better if you told your friends. If this helped you out, your friends might find it helpful too. All right? Uh, well, I guess if they're in the same class. Uh, otherwise, I don't, I don't know if your, I don't know, friends in an English major, I'm not sure if they'd find this too helpful. Anyway, thank you very much.